Thank you, Jane Richard, for discussing Everett the Nurse. So Don and I uh, have been working for the past um, year or half a year, depending on when we joined on integrated <laughs> quantum into the nurse workload. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about those efforts uh, briefly before the day gets started. Uh, so we wanted to start with an overview of some of our collaborators working in quantum computing at LBL. So we we see NERSC as um, a central pillar of this ecosystem. We provide classical hardware that people can run quantum simulations on, test some software, uh, and we have active collaborations with many people at LBL. This is just showing a subset of some of the people working in this space um, at Berkeley Lab. Um, but we are actively trying to work with as many people as possible in this space. Um, NERSC, this is showing some of the people at NERSC who spend all or part of their time working on quantum computing. Um, and that can range from developing quantum algorithms, evaluating hardware, or setting up software to run large scale simulation. So there is a very active space at Berkeley Lab in quantum computing and, and it's, it's growing. So Jay already showed you this slide, what the NERSC systems roadmap looks like uh, from the classical side of things. And on the bottom, we added a few high level arrows of what we think, how we think quantum is going to fit into this timeline, which we'll elaborate on on the next slide. So for the current period, we're really exploring how we think quantum information science will impact the current workload. And maybe by the era of NERSC 11, we might have full integration with quantum hardware. So a more detailed but still high level roadmap is shown here. So in the past year, we've ramped up engagement with the quantum information community. And this was started by putting out a call for proposals to work on quantum information science projects, which Don will talk a little bit more about on the next slide. And in the coming few years, we're really trying to get more access to different quantum technologies. And this involves talking to different quantum hardware companies, seeing whether we can run projects on their machines. And ultimately we want to enable user access to different quantum technologies. Um, and in the coming years, um, you know, it's, it's unclear exactly how the quantum hardware landscape will look, but we're, we're hoping to have more and more collaboration and integration of quantum hardware into the NERSC load by the end of the decade. And this, of course, will require a lot of research from our side to see what is most useful for our users and, and how that should look. So, um... Like Katie mentioned on the previous slide, uh, one of the first things we have done when we started this uh, quantum at NERSC effort last year uh, was to issue, issue an open call for proposals for users to perform uh, research in the area of quantum information science on uh, the polymer system. And after uh, users submitted their proposal and we evaluated them, 16 dif different uh, research teams uh, spread across national labs, universities, and industries were awarded a total of uh, over 250,000 uh, GPU node hours uh, coming from uh, the nurse director's reserve. Um, and the users, these users have uh, access to uh, NVIDIA's Q Quantum SDK to run uh, GPU accelerated quantum simulations uh, based on both state vector and tensor network uh, backends. So uh, Today, uh, yeah, the work began. Uh, this work began about ten months ago in January twenty twenty two at the start of the allocation year, and uh, we're very excited to already have seen such a great and uh, varied out output uh, from all of these projects. And this slide give you, gives you a brief overview of some early science results uh, that have already materialized in the form of archive preprints um, coming from uh, five different user projects. And the topic that they span is really very broad. So uh, we have projects going uh, on, uh, in, in more detail on growth research, on near term devices, developing novel methods for quantum error mitigation, uh, condensed matter physics, uh, development of new methods for circuit cutting, uh, and uh, quantum optimization to Q Q QAOA. And the projects that are highlighted in blue on this slide uh, will be, um, uh, we'll hear more about later today. Uh, during the technical talks, uh, we'll present, these will be presented, and there will be two other user projects presenting their progress, and we're expecting more publications coming out of this uh, QS a Polymer grant uh, soon. 
So given the great success of this uh, initial program, uh, we are very much looking forward to uh, support more research in this area and more research teams in 2023 uh, with startup awards to perform uh, research on Paul Muller. So uh, later during the day, uh, at the end of uh, this event, we will have a tutorial uh, delivered by NVIDIA on how to use our Paul Muller system to efficiently simulate quantum circuits uh, and quantum systems using their Q Quantum SDK. So if you follow, if you stay tuned and follow this tutorial, this might give you a head start to develop your own new simulation codes. Um, and if you're interested in uh, this opportunity of uh, getting access to our system, please come uh, talk to us. So uh, here is uh, the outline uh, for the remainder of today. So right after our introduction to the quantum program, we'll uh, have a talk by Kazra on uh, the advanced quantum testbed at LBNL, which is uh, our uh, superconducting qubits that are being developed uh, by them. Uh, afterwards, we'll have a panel discussion on uh, bridging the gap between HPC and quantum computing. Uh, after the short break, we'll move on to the four technical talks from QS at ProMutter users. And then after the lunch break, we'll hear more about uh, IBM uh, on some tools they have been developing for uh, simulating quantum systems. And we'll end the day uh, with our hands-on tutorial uh, to use QQuantum on ProMutter. We uh, already thank you all for coming.